Hello, my name is Derek Kane, and in this video, I'm going to be describing how to connect your Heatmaster boiler to your network uh, to enable remote monitoring. So let's dig into it. I'll set up a little presentation just to kind of keep my thoughts together, keep this all in order. So first step, is you'll need to connect your boiler controller to your home network. Um, but to do that, you need to connect the ethernet port in the back of your boiler to an ethernet port that's free in your network's router. Um, so you see in this picture here, the ethernet port on the new models is, uh, is in the bottom of the junction box in the back of the boiler below the, below the 110 volt outlet. Um, I recommend using a CAT8 cable because they typically have a little extra insulation against the weather, you know, if, you boil, if you're burying it or whatever, just kind of be careful, make sure you get a high quality cable. Uh, cable is very inexpensive. For my, I set up my dad's boiler for remote monitoring. And for that job, we just used uh, 300 feet of Cat8 cable. I think on Amazon, that was under a hundred dollars. So it's really not expensive. Um, if your boiler is too far from your router, too far from your home, to make any sense to plug it in manually, there are some wireless options available. Uh, some people have, uh, have connected their boilers to a Wi-Fi range extender that connects to the network uh, wirelessly. There's probably a hundred ways to do it, but at any rate, you need to you need to find a way to connect it to your network. For most people, I would recommend just running the cable, run the cable to your house, and plugging it in that way. Uh, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So if if uh, if you're not comfortable connecting it to your network yourself, every little mom and pop computer shop has a networking guy who could come out and have her hooked up in an afternoon. So there's, like I said, there's lots of different ways to connect it manually to your network, but First step is to get it physically connected to your network. So here's a just a video that shows my dad's setup and how the how the port, you know, how the cable connects to the port in the back of the boiler. So in, in his case, the cable runs to the, to the router. Once the controller is connected physically to the network, there are some settings that need to be adjusted so that your controller can talk with your network's router. Um, and so now I'm going to go through how to, how to find the information you need. Collecting necessary network information, what you'll need to collect is the router's local network IP address. I say local network because a router typically has two IP addresses. They have a public facing address where it's reachable on the internet and they have a local IP address. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you in a minute how to, 
have signed this information. You need the router's local IP address, which is also called uh, a default gateway. That'll make more sense in a minute. Then you'll need the network's subnet mask, which is another number, kind of like an IP address. Uh, and then you'll need to find an available unused IP address that's compatible with your network. This will make more sense in a minute. All right, so to find your network and to find this network information, go on a computer that's connected to your network. Uh, in this example, I'll be showing how to do it on a Windows PC. And in the search bar in the bottom left hand corner, type the letters CMD, and you should see an app called Command Prompt pop up. So you click on that app. And you should see, you should see something like this pop up. Uh, in this box, type the letters IPCONFIG, IP config. Press enter. And this black and white box of text will come up and it's all the all the network settings or all the network information for the network that your computer is currently connected to. Uh, so as long as your computer is connected to the network that you're wanting to hook your your boiler to, then just typing in IP config and hitting enter will pull up this information. Uh, and this is the info we'll need to punch into the, in a minute, we'll go over how to enter this information into the controller. So the numbers we need from this page are the subnet mask. So in this example, it's 255.255.255.0. Um, and the default gateway which in this example is 192.168.0.1. But I would suggest when you're going through this in your own system, grab a piece of paper and write down your network's subnet mask. It probably won't be the same as this one. And your network's default gateway. Uh, and then head out to the boiler. And we'll update the settings in the controller so that it can uh, communicate with your network. So to adjust the network settings uh, in the boiler controller, you'll, you'll need the furnace powered on so that there's power to the controller. And using the up and down arrows, scroll through the screens until you get to the very bottom screen. I think it shows today's date on the screen and press the escape button and it accesses a sort of a secret menu of settings so the top option on that list says stop if you'll need to select that and stop the program so that turns off the boiler so that you can change its settings scroll down and select network and click on IP address. And on the IP address screen, then you set the default gateway and the subnet mask to match the numbers that we wrote down. So it needs to match the default gateway and subnet mask for your network. Then set the IP address for the furnace to an IP address that's almost like the subnet mask on your computer. Or I'm sorry, that's almost like the uh, default gateway. So the first nine digits need to match your default gateway. And then the last three digits need to be unique and not the same IP address as anything in your computer. Um, I would suggest just setting the last three digits to say 050 
and unless you have more than 50 devices connected to your network, that one should be free. So you just need to find the IP address that matches matches the first nine digits and is different in the last three digits than anything else up to the network. Right, and then you press the escape button again and go back to the menu and go back up to the top of that menu and select restart the program. And I'll show you here, I have a video of me you know, going through these steps. So, there's the home screen, scroll down through the settings and get up to the, to the screens rather. Get to the bottom page right there, press the ESC button, select stop, confirm that you want to stop the program, then scroll down to network, select network, select IP address. Let me pause this quick. And this IP address, You can edit uh, by, you, you can sort of scroll through it by pressing the left and right arrows and up and down arrows uh, to, to edit that. And so you just set the subnet mask, 255.255.255.0 to whatever your network subnet mask is. Where it says gateway here, you set this to the default gateway that we wrote down. And for IP address, note that this IP address that I selected, the first nine digits are the same as the default gateway, 192.168.000. Uh, so in your case, that needs to match the first nine digits of, of your default gateway. And the last three digits have to be different from the last three digits on the gateway and also different from the last three digits of any IP address on your network. Uh, so most networks assign IP addresses to the devices starting from one, two, three, four, five, however many devices you have on the network. Um, so in my case, I selected 253 because I know we don't have more than 253 devices connected to the network, uh, and that that works. So when you're done adjusting those, you press the ESC button. I call it the escape button, and that'll take you back to the previous menu. There, I'm just scrolling through sort of. Okay, so we'll go back one more time. Then you need to go restart your program. So you select start. Yes. And you hear the boiler fire up. Um, so at that point, your boiler is connected to your network. And then to, to view the controller, uh, you just need to be using any device that's connected to your network. So your phone or say a laptop that's connected to the same network that you just hooked your boiler to. And to access it, you type in the IP address that you set for the IP address on your controller and the boiler. Uh, so that will pull up. First, you'll see this is this is showing the desktop version. There's a nice mobile site too that works well on on uh, uh, on phones or tablets. Um, it'll ask you for a password, and so select web user from this drop down. That's the username, and for password, use the word Heatmaster, all lowercase. Um, and that'll log you in. It should bring up a page uh, 
like the picture you see on the right. Uh, and the up and down buttons work, so you can scroll through and view your, you can view your, uh, you can view your furnace's temperature, top air, bottom air, you can view, um, you can view and modify its settings. You have really quite a lot of access to the uh, to the controller. Be careful who you be careful who you uh, share the IP address of your controller with, because they can change your settings. Anyhow, that is pretty much it for how to connect it to your network and how to how to view the controller while you're connected to your network. It's also possible to, uh, to make it accessible via the internet from anywhere. Uh, so you could be at work and pull up your pull up your you know check the temperature on your boiler on your phone, say via the internet. But that'll be a topic for another video. Um, I guess good luck and stay warm. Thanks for watching.